All right, in lesson 11, I'm going to go into one of the most common statements in JavaScript, and that is the if statement. The reason it's so common is because it controls the flow of where your application goes. And it's all based off of true and false conditions. So it says, if some condition is true, then I'm going to do the one or more statements below the if statement. Let's take a look at a very simple example of that now. I have three variables, a, b, and c. One, three, and five are the values assigned to a, b, and c respectively. And just like before, instead of printing this, I'm going to check the condition and say, if a is less than b, then I'll output a statement, a is less than b, which sounds reasonable, right? Let's run that script. And of course, I get a is less than b because one, last time I checked, is less than three. If I reverse these or change the value of a and make a maybe 12 and run this, I get nothing because it did not go into this block. This is completely empty. Uh, what if I want to do more than one statement? Well, logic would dictate that I just say, let's put another GS info statement and say, Chuck was here. That's not going to work for me. If let's go back to one, three and five, run that. And it says Chuck was here. So it runs both of those. But if I go back to the statement that was false, doesn't run what's in the if statement. Whoa, I get the if, hmm, I get this part. That's because by default, it's only going to run the next statement that's on that if condition. That is considered a block of statements. If I need to get more than one, I use curly braces to enclose that, just like this, one at the beginning and one at the end. This says, here's a block of stuff. Run everything in here under this condition. Now, of course, if I run that and it does nothing because it won't run either of those. So that's the, how the curly braces are used. Again, style guide, some people put a space, some people don't. Some people put the curly brace at the end of the line, some people put it on the next line, and that makes it stand out for them. Totally up to you. I am the style that puts it at the end of the line with a space. Again, check your style guide to make sure that you're using what your organization uses, and it will make it easier for others to maintain your code. Okay, again, lots of spaces. I like the curly brace at the end, but that's sort of my style. And one that you will see pretty much throughout all of the out-of-box examples from ServiceNow. There are a few variants, but uh, in general, you'll see formatted like this. Now, you can do Boolean variables on their own. For example, if I say var bool equals a less than b, it will calculate that, and I can say bool equals true. Okay, I want to find out if Boolean equals true, and if I run that, it is not true, so it won't run those statements. Let's put this back to a true statement here for now, so that it actually runs these, and I can see that bool is in fact true because one is less than three, so on and so forth, you kind of get the idea there. But there is a shortcut, because anything that's in here is a true statement. It's saying, if this expression is true, what is bool? Bool is a, very, a Boolean variable, that has a value of true. So I can just shortcut that equals equals true stuff. I am a lazy programmer. I don't like typing more than I have to. Here's a secret for doing it. It still runs because I can say if bool. And I can turn that around. Uh, no, we'll get that in a minute. If I need something else on the end of that, I can use an else clause. This is sort of the otherwise to my condition. Again, your style guide may vary. There may be people that write them like this. It may even have this one indented. I'm not a big fan of that. This is typically how I use my else statements. And then a little bit of indentation there and say A is not less than B. They could in fact be equal. If I were to say three and three and say A is not less than B, I can put my condition back in here. You kind of get the idea of how you can use shortcuts for the Boolean variables. I don't need that for this case because I'm only using it once. Let's, so uh, it's going to check, is A less than B? 
If it is, it will say a less than b. And let's get rid of that. That was just for example of showing blocks. There's nothing wrong with using curly braces for a single line. In fact, I recommend them because you may want to come back later and put in a second statement. I often see uh, something like this, which we'll, we'll get to in a bit, if some condition, if uh, condition variable, then return, okay? And then later somebody says, well, I wanna put in a debug statement. Well, now you've got the added task of putting that in and putting in your GS info, and then putting in the ending curly bit. That seemed like a lot of extra work just to put in a debug statement. If you start out in the habit of putting them in even for a single line, then you just go about doing what you're doing. It's easier just to incrementally add them later. So I am in the habit of putting them in even for single line constructs. You could have an if that has multiple lines and an else that does not. And this is syntactically fine you can have a match curly brace for a block of code on one half of this express uh, one half of this if statement and not on the other get yeah, totally up to you again i'm in the habit of using them if i run this it should say a is not less than b because it's not they are now equal at 3 and 3 what if i want to compare all three cases less than greater than or equal well that's where i've got this else if i can add another condition and say a is greater than b, I could say a is, change this, greater than b, and then finally close it off with an else to say it looks like a is equal to b. b, 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 b. All right, so I can have this, what's missing, my final curly brace, make sure they match, and in, when you're using a syntax editor, you'll often find that if you place your cursor on one of them, it will highlight the other one. It's true for the script editor in ServiceNow. It's true for the Visual Studio Code that I was using. Many editors will do this to say, your, your things match or they don't. Because when you start getting more involved with these statements, also notice that I am indenting this code. Again, these aren't critical, but boy, it sure makes it easier to read. You can tell your ifs from... Yeah, this is this is kind of tricky to read. So I will indent those a couple of spaces. Your editor may do it for you, eight, whatever. But now I can see if this is true, drop into this, see if I can highlight the right part, drop into this section of code, else if this is true, then do this, else if that's true. So let's see what we get when they are equal. Run that, and it says, it looks like A is equal to B. Hey, we've got conditional programming now. We can do certain pieces under certain conditions. If I say 35 and run that, A is greater than B, I've got my bases covered. If it's not greater than and it's not less than, it's going to be equal. I can get that. Very, very handy for uh, getting those conditions. The second part of this I want to cover is a little Boolean logic. And for that, I'm going to bring up a truth table. Should have brought this out before. There we go. This looks like a big old mess, and I'm going to, this is included with the scripts that you find in the uh, GitHub repo. Just, again, put that URL up there. If you're looking for any of these scripts, they're available from there. So put that away. And the Boolean logic is done with ands, ors, and nots for the most part. When you want to check if a condition is, two conditions are true, both must be true if I'm going to use them in an if statement. So if A and B, both A and B must be true. These will be something like if A is less than B and B is less than C, then you've got a true condition if it's one, three, and five like I did before. If you get one of those wrong, if one of them is false, then the whole thing is false. So both must be true for the end expression to evaluate to true. Or is denoted with two, I should have said this before, but and is denoted with two ampersands. Make sure it's two. One is going to get you in trouble. And or is used with these two pipe characters, those two vertical characters that you see there. So in this case, either one must be true. So if A is true and B is false, 
it's still going to be true. If B is true and A is false, then it's going to still be true. If both are false, then it's going to be false. That's the only way you can get there. And then there is another one for reversing the logic. This one's very, very simple. The exclamation point or the bang character, if A is true and you want to check if it's not true, you can just put a not out there. Let's take a look at some examples on that. Going back to this example. Here's one, three, and five. If A is less than B, yeah, one is less than three, and B is less than C, three is less than five, yes, that makes sense, then A, B, and C are in order. I will print this statement. So let's go see if that runs. It does in fact run if you change any of the variables to say 11. Well, A is not less than B, but B is still less than C. So this part is true, this part is false, it means the whole thing's going to collapse because both parts need to be true for the AND expression to be true. If I run that, I will not get any output because it's not going to print my single statement. If I wanted to include that else and else if part of it, I could do that. Let's check if a couple more go here and say, if B is greater than A or B is greater than C, then say B is greater than one of them. Yeah, that's all I know from this expression. And wrong key, let's run that. A and B and C are in order. Again, I put them back to one, three, and five. So that first one evaluates true. And B is greater than one of them. We don't know which one from this chunk of code, but we know that B is greater than one of them. Is B greater than A? Yes. Is B greater than C? No. Only one half of an or, <laughs> any part of an or really needs to be true. I could also put on here or C greater than A or C less than A. Okay, that's false. Only one of these needs to be true for this statement to come out. Run that and it says B is greater than one of them. Okay, it doesn't say anything about C. That really didn't make any difference, but I just wanted to illustrate that you can chain the OR statements together, but again, only one of them needs to be true. If you were to keep putting more ANDs on here, all of them must be true. Okay, that's the catch. If any part of that fails, none of this will work. That's an AND or an OR, and of course, I think I have an example in here about a NOT. I do not yet. Uh, pay attention to the style guide here. Oop, let me get my variables back. I kind of needed that. Get rid of that part. If A is less than B, yeah, A is less than B, and if B is less than C, then A, B, and C are in order. This is another way of doing this. In order to get into this level, in, in order to get this chunk of code working, this must pass. In order to get this chunk of coding, this must also pass. Sometimes it's handy to know if I have the right pieces, I want to decompose that AND construct and find out maybe there's an else that goes on if A is not less than B. Okay, this is just one way of breaking it down, but logically this part is still the same. But note the comment, if you saw that on there, the indentation can be deceptive. This is why I like matching up my curly braces, because the indentation would assume that this else goes with this if. It does not. It goes with the last if that it saw. So technically, it goes more like that. So watch the indentation because you may see something like A is greater than or equal to B is not necessarily true just because B is less than C. And if I run that, it says, oh, A, B, and C are in order. That means A is less than C. Okay, so I got these two. Why didn't this run? Hmm. It's because this else goes with this. You already ran this first part. B is less than C. It's not going to, oop, sorry, didn't mean to do that. It's not going to get into this block of code. So watch the indentation. I've been fooled by that more than once. And it's another argument I have for making extra curly braces just as a mnemonic. Get that down there. This should technically look like this if you wanted to fix it all up and make it more bulletproof to uh, accidental logic, shall we say. All right, next example I have is playing with those Boolean variables that I did a little bit of in the first exercise. Let's take 
this, get rid of that for a moment, and I have a valve open. A valve open is true, and I could do valve open equals true. I could also do a Boolean variable and just shortcut it. So first let's take and comment that out for a moment. Anything between a star slash and a slash star, star slash star, set them backwards, but you get the idea. I'm only going to run these first three and check if the valve is open, it does an assignment, and of course I get valve open. But I could, as I mentioned before, just take that out because it's already a true expression. What is the if statement looking for? Something that's true. This gets a little weird when you get into truthy falsy stuff and I will be talking about that in just a little bit. So hang on, I do wanna to get to that. So you can see I can shortcut that and if I want to check if the valve is not open, let's reset it to false down here and say, if not valve open, good naming convention on variables helps here. If I were just to say P, then you know not P doesn't really make sense. So if not valve open, almost reads like an English sentence. Get rid of that, it's gonna complain and run that. It says valve is currently open, then something sets the valve variable to false. Valve is now closed. So you can do these Boolean variables very, very easily. Anything left in this lesson? Nope. That's it for the if statement, some Boolean logic, ands and ors. Hope you found that helpful. Join me in a bit when I'm going to show you a shortcut way of doing the if and else. So stick around for that. You won't want to miss that in lesson 12. Thanks. Bye.